Welcome everybody to Mo Rat Nation. I'm Bob Carmichael and let's get started. To begin with, I should mention that I am not a doctor and that these are my personal views and are not intended as medical advice. GLP-1 agonists, warnings for people with AFib. I recently made a video where I talked about the, all kinds of weight loss drugs, including the GLP-1 agonists. Here is a short clip from that video. GLP-1 receptor agonists. The GLP stands for glucagon-like peptide. This is a hormone that helps your body release insulin. Type 2 diabetics have low levels of this hormone and drug companies have developed drugs to improve its level in the body. Here is a list of FDA approved GLP-1 agonist drugs. Delaglutide, the brand name is Trulicity. Exenatide, brand name is Bidurion or Bieta. Semaglutide, either Ozempic or Rebelsis. Liraglutide, Victoza. Adlixin. All of these drugs are for type 2 diabetes and are, are administered daily or weekly by injection. The only exception is Rebelsis, which is taken daily by mouth. The two approved weight loss drugs in this category that have had success are Wagovia and Saxenda. Munjaro, the new Lilly drug that just got approved for type 2 diabetes, but will soon be approved, I think, for weight loss. All three of these drugs have shown big time results in clinical trials. In some cases, weight loss has reached over 20% of body weight. I think we are on the verge of no longer worrying about obesity. These drugs are just the beginning of what I think will be a very happy future for people who have suffered weight loss problems most of their life. Side effects. All of these drugs work in about the same way, and they all have the same side effects. For the most part, this includes nausea, diarrhea, and constipation. But if we look at the possible consequences of taking these drugs, I would say that the future is not yet here. The following that we see on the screen is a list of things that could happen if you take these drugs. Acute pancreatitis, acute gallbladder disease, hypoglycemia, heart rate increase, renal impairment, hypersensitivity reactions, suicidal behavior, and thyroid cancer. If I had type 2 diabetes, I would consider these drugs. They cause massive weight loss and they improve HbA1c levels by as much as two points. But my HbA1c level is 5.2, which is pretty good. I don't think I want to risk something like thyroid cancer or pancreatitis just to lose some weight. So for the time being, I'm going to pass on this group of drugs but I know that in the future, they'll figure out how to stop these problems and obesity will be a thing of the past. After making that video, I began to think about whether or not I should try one of these drugs. They sure showed some remarkable results when it came to weight loss. So even though I'm not diabetic, which is why these drugs were developed, I ordered a month's supply. I've decided not to mention the drug name since all of these drugs have the same side effects. Wrong from the very first start, I should have waited till just before a meal for my injection. Instead, I took the dose with my cup of coffee first thing in the morning, and I did not eat until noon. I was warned in advance that the first day would be a difficult one, so I decided not to exercise or do anything strenuous. As I began my diet, which involves small amounts of protein, such as chicken or fish, and a vegetable for two meals a day, the rest of the first day was uneventful, and I really thought that maybe this was going to be the drug I was looking for. I make a point of not drinking liquids in the three hours before I go to sleep at night, so that I don't have to wake up and urinate at night. This turned out to be mistake number two. A lot of things trigger AFib. But the four most common ways to trigger AFib involve drinking alcohol, hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, drinking coffee, and dehydration. 
Without thinking, I had combined three of the four most common triggers for AFib. The next morning, as I sat there drinking my only cup of coffee for the day, my heart began to pound. Like a lot of people, I cannot tell when I am in AFib. That's why I keep a CardioMobile EKG device at my desk. When I checked the results, it said possible AFib. That afternoon, after I exercised, I took another CardioMobile test, and I was back in normal rhythm. I did not expect this to happen. I was on a very small starting dose of the drug, and I normally wake up dehydrated and then drink a cup of coffee without any AFib side effects. I'm very careful about my AFib condition. If any of you have ever had the unpleasant experience of being shocked back into rhythm, you will know why I say that. I should not drink any coffee. After two cups of coffee, I have a noticeable increase in heart rate and a sick feeling that something is wrong. But I love coffee, and I've tried to hang on to that one cup in the morning that I look forward to when I wake up. As far as dehydration is concerned, I'm careful to drink enough water and make sure I have enough electrolytes in my system so that that does not cause me a problem. I take one gram of potassium supplement every morning. In addition, I also take three different forms of magnesium. Two of these forms are very high rates of absorption. Angstrom magnesium has an almost 100% absorption rate, but it comes in very small doses. So I also take 320 milligrams of sucrosomal magnesium, the most absorbable liposomal form of magnesium. Also, the type of buffered C that I take contains 40 milligrams of magnesium per tablet. And to make sure that I never suffer from dehydration, I add an electrolyte supplement to my water when I exercise. I knew that my morning glucose level would be low because of the small amount of food I had the day before. And I knew that I had problems in the past with more than one cup of coffee. But with all the electrolytes that I take, I did not think that it would cause me a problem with dehydration. I am not going to continue using this drug. But if I were to start it over, what would I do differently? I would not diet during the first week I was on the drug. This would give my body a chance to adjust to the drug. I would not drink coffee at all, at least for the first week. I would eat a small amount of carbohydrate first thing in the morning so that my blood sugar would not get too low. And I would make sure that I quickly rehydrated myself every morning. I think if I had taken these steps, this AFID problem could have been avoided. I plan to do several additional videos about my struggles with AFib, so be sure to subscribe to Mole Rat Nation and click on the weight loss playlist at the end of this video. I have no financial ties with any of the products mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching.